everybody, Big Mess Tuck CG Fly Shop here at the Fly Tying Vice this afternoon on a rainy day. Groundhog Day is what they said, or National Hedgehog, Hedgehog Day. So, nonetheless, I'm going to be tying a uh, purple fly. It's not necessarily a purple haze, it's more of a purple mayfly. And I'm going to use a moose body for the tail, use some purple dubbing for the body, use some crystal flash for a rib. Uh, brown hackle fiber or you can do like a um, like a badger honey badger as well I'm going to use some uh, calf um, body for the wings and uh, show you the difference that's going to be a finer finer material and it's a fly that fishes very well purple just works in a dry fly don't know why we're using purple thread this is a TMC 100 size 12 for demonstration purposes uh, 12s 14s uh, 14 probably being the most common that I would fish in this, but uh, 12s early, early in the spring. So we're gonna start our purple thread uh, onto the hook itself. We're just gonna lay down a thread base on here and I'm gonna come to maybe about a third of the way back from the, um, we'll call it the eye of the hook. And this is gonna be the tie-in point area for those wings. And when you're tying with hair, calf hair, calf uh, body or calf tail, that's important where you stop your thread and when you tie it when you go to bend this up you're only going to have this much space in front so you have to give yourself some room to work with so i have taken the calf body here and it's a really really fine finer and it's shorter fiber but it it makes a fantastic wing and in some cases it's easier to work with than a calf tail of course this is yellow but you can see on the calf tail it's uh, it's got more uh, bend to the hair fiber, kind of like my beard. There's kind of some waviness to it um, that I find. It floats very well, but you get a lot of under fur that you got to pick through. Where the calf body, you you don't have to use a hair stacker if you do it right, but I will use a hair stacker. So what I'm going to do, I've got my, I've got it stacked, and I'm going to pull it out, tips facing forward, and I'm going to grab it, try to grab it with my right hand. My apologies, I want to just tap it a few more times. Get those fibers down there so I can get them out. Didn't do that either. Not good enough. Okay, here we go. So it's so fine. I'm going to get those fibers kind of cleaned up here just a smidge. But anyway, they're they're super fine. I don't know how well you can see that, but they're really fine, relatively speaking, to the calf tail. It's just a smoother and it's easier to work with, of course, uh, in my opinion, and I think anyone who ties opinion. But I want to kind of measure my wing area. I don't want to make this about the length of the shank of the hook. I want to spin my thread counterclockwise so it will jump back into my fingers and I can kind of do a pinch, pinch wrap in here like so. Okay, beautiful. And I'm gonna look at my placement before I go any further, and that's really good. So now I'm just gonna make tight wraps going down this hair, and I wanna take my scissors. I'm gonna come in at an angle, and I'm, that's, we're also building our taper just by doing that right there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna secure these butt sections to the hook, just like this, and we're creating that wrap for our body that we're gonna have. Okay, so there we go. Now at this point, what we gotta do next is we're gonna have to prop up the hair so we can create our wing. And the way we do that is I like to take my thumb, kind of come in here and press that back, take my thread, and I'm going to start just making touching wraps right into the base of the calf hair in this particular case. Just like so. I'm going to take a half hitch tool. I'm just gonna jam it. I'm just going to jam it right in there like so, okay? Boom. Just really prop that up. And when I go and I separate these to give them in two equal stacks and figure eight, it's really going to draw these fibers together and make a fantastic wing. It helps with the buoyancy and certainly visibility. Hair wing flies are great fishing flies, usually a little bit more visible but they float well too. So we're just gonna to try to split these up as best as possible to even amounts. I'm not gonna sit here and 
count fibers and, and no pun intended, I'm not gonna split splitting hairs, but do a couple of wraps here. I wanna do a couple of wraps here, kind of get them to a point we can work with. Now I'm gonna start doing some figure eight wraps. I'm gonna go around this bundle, come up under over here on my side, go back over across and then come in front and secure that. So I've got one errant fiber here. I'm gonna go ahead and get that out of my way cause it's bothering me. Get that one there out of the way. Okay, beautiful. Now I can do this here. I'm gonna keep doing those wraps. It's gonna keep bundling these up here for us. And as you can see, it's really starting to tame and control those fibers. Just like this, there. Beautiful, and that's all there is to it. At this point here, you can see we've got some really nice wings on this fly. It's going to stand out, pretty fly, but other than being a pretty fly, it's a fly that fishes well too. So go ahead and put a half hitch in here, and I want to take my thread, it's going to come behind, and I want to come to the back of the hook, basically where the barb is, and now it's time for a tail, okay? I'm going to use some moose moose um, mane, uh, moose moose um, hair on this here. There's a mane and then there's a moose body. This is moose body, I apologize. Moose mane is a lot longer. I've got that in my hair stacker. I've already taken the liberty to stack those. And we've got these fibers. And I like these because they're just so dark. Uh, I like the colors. So I'm going to trim my t uh, butt sections here. And I'm going to use this. This is, you see where the ramp is here. I'm going to spin my thread counterclockwise. Once again, get it to jump back. Loose, loose. I'm just trying to keep those, make sure they stay on top of my hook. And there we go. A tail could be, eh, I like, I kind of like that length on that there, honestly. You can go a little shorter if you'd like. But uh, on some of these flies, I like a little longer tail because I think it gives a better, um, it, number one, it floats better. It, it helps that fly to stand up natural. Uh, but it really uh, comes into play with what those natural fibers are on those mayflies. So at this point, we're almost done with this fly, actually. Uh, you'll see some. The purple haze is actually a thread body fly. And this, this was all you would have. But I do two things differently here on this particular pattern. I've got a piece of crystal flash that I'm going to use for a rib. And then I want to use some dubbing. I can tell you from experience, I fish these flies both with the flash and without the flash. And the ones with the flash outfish the ones without any flash, hands down, big time. And crystal flash is something that's used a lot in um, like a, for an underwing or maybe some uh, other type scenarios. But when you pull it tight, it actually flattens out and it gives you that pretty cool ribbing effect. Um, in the body itself, and I really like that. So I'm gonna take some um, purple dry fly dubbing here. Let's get a little bit here, just like so. I, I like the dubbing over just the thread body because I'm looking for durability more than anything else, folks. I'm not saying that if you don't coat the, the thread, but at that point you're adding that weight of the UV resin to that. And I don't wanna get into adding uh, weight to my dry fly. I want it to float, I want it to be buoyant. I want it to be durable. Okay. All right, we're gonna start with that. I'm just gonna start making wraps up. And I don't really care if this thing gets a little wild on those fibers because that ribbing is going to really help draw that in. So I wanna put a little bit more dubbing on this, not much. When you sit here and you tie a bunch of these patterns at the same time, you get dialed in on how much you need to do. So repetition goes a long way when you're tying flies. So there we go. Looks really nice right there. And I'm just gonna bring this remaining kind of up here in the front. And I'm just gonna do a finger half hitch. If you haven't learned that, you need to do so. Make your life a lot easier. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take this rib here. If you have a non-rotary vise, of course, you're gonna wrap it this way. But if you've got a rotary vise, you're just gonna rotate it like so, controlling that. It's almost like palmering hackle or any materials that you're doing into the hook. I wanna come up, come around that wing, avoid those fibers, come up here in front. I'm just gonna tie this off. So there we go, make some wraps. Just gonna bring it all the way up. 
but it adds just a cool touch to that. And it, and it, it, it's ha it serves a purpose, guys. It, to me, it really does hit fishes better with the ribbing than it does without the ribbing, no doubt about it. Hands down, hands down. But it just, just a great, you can see, I'm sure the camera's picking that up, that, that uh, Sony camera right there is doing a great job picking that up. But that just, it just works. It, it's, it's works. I would, it'd be like, if you didn't do that, it's like going outside with you, no pants on, I guess. It, the fly's not complete unless you do it like that, okay? Now, as far as your hackle, I do a couple different ones. I do like a brown. I'm an advocate of using what you have at your disposal right here, but a uh, but a badger will, will do the trick too. I'm going to take this here, and it's kind of appropriately sized. Use that. That's a good way, or you can use a hackle gauge, just like so. But uh, I like the way that looks on there. I'm going to strip off those uh, fibers. Once again, I'm going to tie in with the shiny side facing toward the camera area, the dull side facing toward me. So spin along. Just like so, I'm going to, beautiful. In there, 88 out the gate, folks. Boom, quicker than a bad hiccup, just like that. I'm going to take a little bit more dubbing. I'm going to put that up here toward the eye of the hook a little bit, give something that's not quite as slick for that stem to kind of bite into. Just like this, it just completes it off quite nicely. And do a wrap right there, and then I want to come up here like so, just just like that, beautiful. Well, just like that. Once again, learn that hand um, half hitch. The, the the least amount of time you, you spend trying to grab tools, the quicker that you'll that you'll get your flies tied. And you're probably more out to you know put a half hitch in it, which is going to give you some redundancy in case something goes on. I want to do three wraps, kind of behind. I'm really tying into those those wings and I want to come in front. I want to really going to kind of prop those up just like so. Here I'm just going to kind of manipulate that like this. Make several wraps in front. I want a heavily hackled fly. I want this thing to be able to stand out in the spring. Maybe a little bit faster water. Make it look like a chunky chunky meal for crunchy munchy time. Boom, boom, boom. And back in front. Back and in front. Oops, half inch tool here. And the reason why I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna push those fibers out of the way. Boom, just like this, just like so. All right, now we have a clean eye. Get my thread out of the way, come in here with my Dr. Slick scissors, fine point, get in here close, trim it, beautiful. We're almost done, as you folks know. A Couple of whip finishes and some head cement and you are ready to go put this out here on your tippet and go catch some fish. Where's one? Two. So you got redundancy built in if something happens. You've got a stop point where it only unravel to that point. Get in here with my blind eyes. Kind of go more by feel. And that right there, my folks, is a great little purple mayfly. It's just a variation of a purple haze. It's not a purple haze. I just call it a purple mayfly. Um, I'm sure there's other variations of it out there. I'm not trying to steal anything, folks. It's, it just works, so um, just keep that in mind. I've got one errant little white fiber there out of the way, but this is one you should in, you should add to your fly box if you're not already done so. Um, if you folks have any questions, info at tuckflyshop.com. Make sure you hit that subscribe and hit that notification bell. Uh, that way you'll be the first to know when we upload some new videos. Thank you, folks, for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Y'all take care.